gods of darkness, breeders of chaos, come forth and take possession of this vile world. This is the Cult Faction Podcast episode 127, Spotlight on the Gate. Ah, <laughs> uh, Superman. Hello and welcome to the Cult Faction Podcast, episode 127, where we will be casting our spotlight on the 1987 classic, maybe, The Gate. However, before we do that, we've got a bit of preamble and all that sort of nonsense to be getting on with. I am your host, Damien Hicks, and as ever, I am joined by... Paul Hawkins. And Brett Summers. Cool. So, how's our fortnight been? Have we been, not the game, how's our t- past two weeks been? How have we done anything exciting? Let's not go on straight on to what we've done on telly-wise. Let's mm-hmm. chew have, the fat and see have, if we've done anything cool. I've, I've played a lot of Fortnite. Have you? Not as much as he has. He's like level 160. Right. Is it misty in here? Is it my glasses filthy? No, it's not that misty. No, no, it's my glass. I can't. I can barely see you. <laughs> can you play misty for me? <laughs> yeah. So, I, yeah, what level are you? What level are you? I'm like fifty nine or something. Is, is that good or is that like do you suck? No, it's just he plays it a lot more than me. Hmm. Um, but does that mean you suck or does that mean he's really good? No, 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 no. Often we play duos, hmm. and yeah, we win a few times. Um, it, it's just all a bit weird now because. They always introduce like new weapons and stuff like that. Well, there's new seasons, aren't there? I've, I've learned that at school. Yeah, but but it's really over the top Marvel weapons now. <laughs> so, so we've got an Infinity Gauntlet and just wiping everyone. It's out. not Infinity Gauntlet, but you got Iron Man's, you got War Machines Gauntlets, and all this kind of stuff. But if you get those, then you're you're pretty much sorted. Mm, fair enough. But other than that, not much. Um, dog sitting. Um, Oh, yeah, that was my dog. Yeah. It was your dog. Yeah. I hope it was your dog. <laughs> Sarah didn't just bring some random dog in. Um, Is that what they call it nowadays? Yeah. <laughs> Played a bit of music with a friend of mine. Um, but other than that, no, rain stopped play for most of the time. Oh, fair, fair enough. enough. Boring life then, really. Um, uh, <laughs> Thanks, Damien. It's all right. I, I just uh, go home and... <laughs> Drown my sorrows or something. Not that I've got any alcohol at home. That's all right. Nice glass of water. Mm. That'll do it. <laughs> Southern water. water. That's just <laughs> what I need with all the rain. It's probably <laughs> like full of sewage or something yeah. where it's come back up again because all, all the drains are overflowing. Peckham turd. But um, now I, I went to the cinema. Oh, exciting did times. Did, 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 did. <laughs> and then... um. <laughs> Last weekend, I helped run a massive jiu-jitsu competition. I wasn't competing. I was doing all the organising and stuff. And, um, yeah, did you win? really cool. Well, I wasn't competing. So. I know. You, you were organising. Yeah. Did you win? Oh, yeah, I won. Yeah. <laughs> Everything went all right. Everyone was happy. And, like, no one was attacked by any parents or anything or beaten up by people who were upset with what groups they were put in or whatever else. So... Cool. So far, so good. <laughs> um, yeah, that's about it. And school. 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 What about you, Damien? Well, I mean, compared to you guys. You've done a lot. I've, I've had an exciting couple of weeks. I've been to Pepper Pig World again. Yay. Um, although, I, Bolton's Park. Yeah, I can say na- now it's... Have you now done that interview yet? No, nah, she's not oh, having a bar of it. Well, I mean, to be fair, she's in mourning, isn't she? Because of Grandpa Pig's voice is, yeah. is dead, so... Um, Daddy Pig's got the best voice. Yeah. yeah. Good boy, I am. Good boy. Um, but yeah, I've got to stop saying Peppa Pig well because spend less and less time in Peppa Pig World and more time in the main park now. So that's cool. Um, Sarah went on, or I took, I convinced Sarah to go on Cyclonator, <laughs> which, if you don't know, <laughs> is the one that goes, like, uh, spins and goes, like, almost, for, you're almost upside down, and it? Spins uh, back around again. Screw that. She didn't like it. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
bit. When did that? You guys probably still go on them, but like, I used to love going on all those. Then one day it became, that's a bit tall. Or, <laughs> Oh, that that's that just looks a bit quicker for my neck or something. When did what what happened? You got into your forties. That was before. It's way before that. Was it? <laughs> no, but I don't know because I I'm, I but, still go on them all. There's but you used to be like, that let me on. go at the gate and just go running and yeah, yeah. And again and there's no queue. Quick, go another time. Now it's like well, I've done it once. I must admit, a few years ago when we went to Alton Towers, we went on Rita, the really fast ride. Oh yeah, the the, the um Rita? car one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You were on Rita at old times. <laughs> <laughs> There's a headline. And I really did think I, I pulled something in my shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The only one I'll never go on again is Space Mountain at Disney World because it, it pushed my head back into the headrest and I was just in pain for like weeks afterwards. Mm. So I'm not doing that again. But just, the rest of them, fine. years ago we went to Chessington and it was that pirate ship and I got on the end and we had an extra person in the road and when we hit the bit at the top I swung right out and back in again. <laughs> No, I don't. But <laughs> was maybe that was maybe that's the yeah, trigger. That that been, yeah, that just pops in my head now. It's been <laughs> I had all of the fit like the, the rail still and my feet were there, but like my hips kind of swung out to the side outside the thing and back in again because they didn't realise you were supposed to have like six people and we had seven or oh, all right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, yeah, that may have been it. Yeah, that's it. There's your there's your just answer. Unlocked my childhood trauma yeah. <laughs> or teen um, trauma. Do you still what else have I done? I haven't done anything slams. else. <laughs> they think Getting ready for Halloween. Yeah. If you went in the house now, yes. you'd see a few we, we did skeletons look. We, we and things. We saw a few. Yeah. Uh, Eddie the skeleton is sat at the, <laughs> the uh, island in the kitchen. I thought your yeah. slim fast plan was working brilliantly. <laughs> um, oh, I had my chair vandalised at school today. I don't know if you oh, saw the I saw the Facebook post. Yeah. yeah. One, of, uh, one of the students. He's not actually in my classes not anymore, but um, he came in. Well, it was lunchtime and I nipped out my room for something and I came back in and all the kids like we put things on in my room which we'll get to what we're watching at a moment later and um he was on the computer and I could see his sort of shoulders going <laughs> like where he was sort of laughing and I, I thought oh it's probably what he's watching and I went in and I had a big picture on the back of my um chair stuck on and it was Howard the Duck with a dark beard drawn on it and it had Mr Summers the Duck and that's not like a duck's got to do what a duck's got to do. Or I can't remember. What no, it said no it. more, Mister Nice no, Duck. No, no more, Mister Nice Duck. That was it. And um, yeah, and he, then then he signed it as well, so it was obvious it was him. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> not in the top then, set, then, no. Yeah, no, no. <coughs> and then I went, "Who's done this?" And you could see him laughing and that. And he went, "Mister Summers, I only did it because it's your favourite film," <laughs> which was interesting. Yeah, it's like that's a deep cut that. It's a film that a lot of people probably would never have even heard of. And he's in year nine, so that puts him at about... What was that? Uh, mid to late 80s? How Eight, 86. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> so it was like, yeah, okay. Someone's, hmm, interesting. Someone's listened to a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe so. But um, yeah, so that was quite cool. And now I've put it on social media. And at, at the end of lunchtime, it had four likes. And he was like... Oh my god, four people like it. That's great. <laughs> I said, well, we'll see what it is tomorrow. So if you are listening, okay, I'll go. Away, what yeah. is it? It's on. It, what it's is on he? Facebook and it's on Instagram. But I'll just show him. Go look, like thirty people like it now, and he's all excited. Yeah. So yeah, you know, it's not. It's not for me. It's for the kids. Yeah. Well, it keeps him on the side, doesn't it? Yeah. Does, it, it. does he want to listen to the podcast? <laughs> he probably has. Probably done. has been if he because there's no other way he'd know about. Uh, yeah, but the thing is, as duck. well, is that he is. Like with his, he's he's got sort of an autism. He could be on this because like when they he went, Mister Summers, are you aware that they're they're bringing out a god? I remember this. He's like that they're bringing out a Godzilla. Was it minus one? He goes, the original film came out in 1954 by the Kyoko Corporation and was originally yeah, yeah. released then and made 565,000 yen at the box office. But that one, and it was like, whoa. <laughs> then I was like, I wish you bet was still on. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, I tried him on numbers, shit. But stuff yeah. like that, brilliant. So, so it's no good taking him to a uh, casino. Nah, the search continues. <laughs> why do you work with S E N? Well, yeah, <laughs> that'll be why. Not, not really. Cool then. So that's the preamble of of our week yep. or two weeks. What we've we been watching. I'll go to Mr. Summers first because apparently you have lots. I do. Well, lunch club. We finished um, lunch club at school. 
<laughs> we have finished. Oh god, what were we watching? Oh, the X Men ninety seven. We've gone through all that now. We've okay. enjoyed that, and that's great. And you know, bring on season two. I think we spoke about that before. Yeah, we do. Now yeah, we have. We are on One Punch, the anime. Okay. Because you've all seen the live action one, haven't you? So yeah. I haven't seen that yet. So I'm currently exp- we're about five or six episodes. You mean One Piece? Anime. One Piece. What Sorry, did he say? Yeah. One, one punch. punch. I no, heard you... One Piece. How no. weird's that? Uh. Yeah. I oh, know because there's One Punch Man, but it's One Piece. Yeah, we're talking about that today. So. But yeah, One Piece with the monkey stretchy dude who wants to be a pirate and yeah. stuff. Yeah. And um, I'm not sure I'll go back to that. It's a bit bonkers. In fact, I don't even know if it has got a second season. But I, I thought it. Nothing else seems to. No, have. exactly. <laughs> I thought it did because it got really good views. I actually quite enjoyed so have it. a lot of things. Dead Boy Detective's got good reviews. Yeah. Oh, the other one that was really good as well. And Lock, not not Lock and Key, the um, yeah, yeah. That, that the one with the reviews. ghosts where there w- there's been a cataclysm yeah. of some sort and no one that we, we didn't yeah. even find out what that was. That was good, that. Yeah, what was that called? Can't remember. No. Something else has just been cancelled, like in the last day or so as well. I've forgotten now what it was. Oh Jesus, that, we are getting old. Yeah. Anyway, one piece. Well, it was good to cancel everything. Um, yeah, no, it, I've enjoyed it. It's a bit bonkers. The kids absolutely love it. I'm just sort of sat there thinking I'm about to have a hemorrhage because it's wow, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. that Mark, yeah, and all that. And um, but the story seems quite good, and because BBC iPlayer for some reason have. Have banked on and put all their money onto One Piece, and they've got it all on iPlayer. Well, the first two hundred and fifty episodes. <laughs> the first two hundred. So I was like, because they were like, "What we're going to watch next?" So I it's said, like well, cities of gold. By the time yeah. we finish this, you'll have left <laughs> because there's like I think there's twenty seasons or something so far, and I think it's still going. Yeah, it is. But um, but we'll see how we do. But they're all loving it. I. I can I can watch it while I'm at my lunch, and they're all sat quietly watching it, and fair enough, and cheering and booing whenever. But we've just got to a bit where there's a cute little dog that's guarding a shop, and its owner died, and it's fighting this big liony thing, and um, we've stopped it like sure it's not he, a dragon. You still get the it's a man with like a thing because they thought he was part of the line, but it's separated from him now. Oh, okay. It's got like big white, white big white thing. It might be a dragon. Oh, in don't the encourage him, Dave. But um, you can't just, help it. No, but everyone, it, there was like an advert thing where it paused, and um, that's where we ended it because right, we'll stop there because eight five minutes left. We'll carry on the next one. But everyone's worried about the little dog now, <laughs> and um, I'm guessing it lives because it'll probably go with them on the boat. But yeah, you know, on their like, epic adventure. Yeah, but because there there aren't that many yet. It's him, a ginger girl, and a man with green hair who's really good with swords. Yeah. yeah. But um, yeah, they're all enjoying it. I've not watched most of the anime I've ever watched have been like completed, sit like Death Note and different Voltron and stuff that have been like full se- series. So there's a beginning, a middle, and an end, and then it's done. I haven't got to keep going on because it's like that Bleach. I think that's still going as well. And that's been going for like twenty years. It's like yeah, I can't be done with that nonsense. Well, if you're gonna do it, just end that, then do another one, quote something else where it just follows on. Although funny, isn't it? Because he. Keeps going on about like Power Rangers and the other equivalent, and they're great because they've been going on for like yeah. But they stop, years. but they stop and rename it somehow. So you've got jumping. So you've got on the points. dinosaur one, or the you've probably got di- the you've got under the sea jumping one. on points. Whereas this is just seems to be going on forever. <laughs> it's an epic adventure. <laughs> oh, it is on the high seas, <laughs> heading for the center line. Yeah. See, it's been burned into <laughs> my head. What have you been watching, Paul? Yeah, take us Save away from, from this. this anime because I've got all the voices. Oh, yeah. Oh. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Ah. All right. That was, that was Damien. <laughs> this is one of the for that. Yeah, all right. Let's just stop there now. Wolves on Apple TV. Brad Pitt, George Clooney, they play the fixers, the people that go in and tidy up the mess if something goes wrong. Oh, cool. Twist in the tale is something does go wrong with a, um, I think she's a politician or something. So she calls a fixer or a wolf, um, George Clooney. George Clooney turns up. Lo and behold, in walks Brad Pitt, who's the wolf for the hotel to clean up the mess. And the two have to work together to tidy up the mess. But are they like so incompatible or just never happen? Of course, because they... That's the whole point about being a wolf. You work on your own. You're a lone you wolf. You're a lone wolf. Yeah. Are, are they named after Winston Wolf? 
Yeah. Obviously. It has yeah. to be. Yeah. It's got to be, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Like, can they get sued for that? No, because no. that's the name. That's what they're giving. Anyway, it's, it is what it sounds like. Yeah, Shit. They have to work together, and lo and behold, they... Is Julia Roberts okay in ...become this? good friends. No, she's not in it. <laughs> but uh, and I am going to ruin it. Yeah, don't worry. Yeah, um, you two are gonna I'm not even going to bother ringing the spoiler yeah. bell because it's a Brad Pitt so thingy film. I'm not just no. So they're obviously working against each other to start with. They hate each other, then they become... Not then they become friends. lovers. Not friends as such, but, you know... There's a respect. Yeah. And then they're, they're almost like going to part ways and it's like, well, maybe we should work together <laughs> type thing. You can tell it's on the cards. But they don't. And then big bad guys turn up at the end to wipe them out and it ends on a Butch Sundance and uh, uh, Butch Cassidy and Sundance ending where they just get up and start shooting. Oh, cool. So maybe there might be a sequel if anyone likes it or if not, it's got an ending. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that sounds shit. It wasn't great. Clearly, hasn't done a lot lately, has he? No. Coffee adverts. Yeah. Mm. So is Brad Pitt. Oh yeah, yeah, hasn't he? Yeah, yeah. I mean, they don't need to. They do the coffee adverts because they got a tax bill to pay. And yeah. Just, just get on with it. They and just then want some free coffee. Probably. Yeah. I cool. Would. Right. What about um, you, Damien? What about me? I think the only I I've been <coughs> racking my brain because I've been you know. Halloweening the house. Ludwig, I think, is the only thing I've watched. Ludwig? Ludwig. I, is that a cartoon? Well, is that the Mitchell thing? Yeah. I, want, I thought I've you were having a stroke all. then, Brett. Sorry. No, I was just going to say no spoilers because I've, I've got that to watch. That's all I don't know which one's Ludwig. David Mitchell. Tell David Mitchell. Oh, David Mitchell yeah, 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 yeah. plays a guy who um, he's... I know he's, from what I've he's read... He's socially he's, inept. He... He's Portraying his twin brother. Yeah, I'll get to that. Oh, just, no, just yeah, I was just telling you what I knew, so he didn't ruin it. Right. That was all. Let him talk about yeah, it. Yeah, but I just told him not to do any spoilers. I'm not, not doing any spoilers. But I thought if you knew what I knew, it'd be all right. Oh, okay. Right. He plays a guy who's socially inept, so he basically lives on his own. He sets crossword puzzles. Well, I think he sets crossword puzzles for a living. It seems like that. And he's written a few books about puzzles. Basically, he likes puzzles. And he gets a phone call from his sister-in-law saying that, or te- literally telling him to come to the house. And she's booked a taxi for him. When he gets there, turns out his brother, who is a uh, CID detective, has gone missing and has left her a note to say, um, leave the house, go and you know, disappear, sort of thing. And then, so he, this is all in the adverts, pretty much. So he then, the the conceit is he has to he wa- he needs to go to the police station to get his brother's notebook so they say well no one's not no one you all got to do is go in go get mm. the notebook and come out again no one's going to know yeah. it's not i can't remember yeah. david or whatever his name is james i think it is so no one's going to know you that you're not james and obviously he gets to then all caught up in various kerfuffles kerfuffles and murder inquiries and stuff it's got good reviews it's very good and it already has a second season. Woohoo! Is there a butt coming? Yes. Yeah, I thought there might be. The butt is. Have you seen all of them? I've seen all of yeah. them. They're all on iPlayer. Well, there's six. I yeah, there's only six. It's UK, isn't it? Mm-hmm. The butt is. I like big butts and again, that like. The comedy comes from a certain scenario, and that scenario gets cleared up at the end. So. I don't, you know, obviously the storyline can continue. But they've used the gimmick up. But the gimmick of of that has disappeared by the end of the last episode. So I don't see where the comedy is going to come from. Because the character himself is funny, but it's nothing new. All of the comedy comes from the misunderstanding. Right. And then so, yeah. (coughs) But it's still worth watching. It is funny. Um, I like David. The Mitchell. puzzles and you know the murders themselves yeah. aren't groundbreaking. They're all pretty much, you know, it's not death in paradise. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, but it's still worth watch. Um, so back to Mr. Summers, I guess. Oh, okay. I've carried on with Agatha all along the Marvel Witch series, which is up in its game for Halloween. Um, yeah, it's still worth doing. But again, I think you got the right idea, Paul. Wait for it and then watch it all because 
I get the feeling I've missed something and then have to try to remember what happened the week before because it's, it's very... <laughs> don't, don't even look at no, me. No, but I'm it's very... Interested. Marvel's, you know, it's always a little bit Easter egg-y. You know, there's always little nods and references and things. I have finished uh, the amazing Netflix series The Queen of Villains, which was based on the Japanese wrestling legend Dump Matsumoto and it's like yeah, her yeah, real life and saying, all that. Yeah. The first... The second half, because I got to the middle, the second half I felt was rushed. I don't think, I think they had like eight episodes, whatever it was, and it was like, we'll just make it and, you know, no one's going to probably watch this and we'll get it done and tell the whole story. Whereas it's won loads of awards and took on a life <laughs> of its own and all that. And they, because it kind of, you get the whole origin story and it gets to the middle. Then you get to the bit where she's at her peak, and then she's suddenly retiring. Spoilers, but it's real life. <laughs> so, you know, it's like her life happens like yeah. in the 80s, so you can't really. And then it's like she retires and all that. And it's just sort of like, so you didn't have enough of her being famous and being like the top one. You see the, the key bits, but there's a lot more they could have put in there. And there's a lot of, with the other lady wrestlers involved. And there's different backstories where those got like real life, back, not just wrestling storylines, like real life storylines and political things. And the, there was bullying going on and eating disorders and all that. And there's a lot more they could have put in there, which is hinted at, or they sort of drop little things. But then that's the last time you see that person. And it's kind of like, I liked it. It was really good. But there was, I don't know, I feel they like just sort of rushed the last years of uh, all the from her when she got to the top to the retirement just seemed to be like one and a half episodes later sort of thing and it could have had a done with a bit more meat to them bones yeah because they put so much in the first half that's what made it really good because you see the training you see the other like more successful wrestlers not liking certain other wrestlers and they do the thing like where they tell them they're going to do something and then they do something different yeah. in the ring to stitch them up and then there's they accuse another woman of stealing their wallet and they all get to slap her in the face in the dressing room because she's just she never did take the wallet she's just jealous of her you get all that sort of stuff it's all just really like the culture and that's all really interesting but then our, our little hero who's like the nice one who won't say boo to a goose becomes like the queen of evil because she's worked her way into it now <laughs> you know she's and what to do and she's just had enough of everyone and she's just gone for it and then she's sort of at the top and then oh by the way I'm going to retire and it's like hmm yeah and there were other things and I mean she even not that anyone cares but she there was a bit in the 80s where she came over to the WWF for a few months and wrestled in America and that but None of that's, I think she got homesick and went back, but none of that's in there like, of how big she was. Because obviously they cottoned on for, well, she's getting like Hulk Hogan in Japan here as an evil one. We want we want to cash in yeah. on that and all that. You don't get any of that scope or such, but it's still really good. And it's, I, I would say worth a watch whether you like wrestling or not, because it's that whole <laughs> I don't think I will. Sports. Oh, you can give it an episode, <laughs> see what you think. I watched the Florence Pugh one. Yeah, probably it's similar to that. No, it's not. It's not Florence Pugh in it. <laughs> <laughs> I feel you watched it for different reasons, Paul. I watched it for the wrestling. Sure you did. Okay, what else you watched, Paul? Um, finished Rings of Power, season two. Lucky you. Lo and behold. Did you like it? The Stranger mm. is... <clears throat> ding, ding, ding. Spoiler bell. Well, no, it's been out for a while. Oh. Everyone kind of knew it anyway. It's Gandalf. <laughs> There you go. Just I don't know case. why they dragged right. it out for two series. You know, you just bloody say it. You got was Tom that the dude that came in on a comet or whatever it was. Yeah, yeah. So they finally gave that up. Um, Tom Bombadil's in it a little bit in the last episode. He's all right. But is that just the like? Hey, look, the film didn't have him, and we've got him, so we're just as cool. Maybe I, I don't know. Um, because there was a whole internet movement that he wasn't in the Peter Jackson films. <laughs> yeah, Balrog's in it for a little bit. At the very end, there's a cool bit where what, the King of the Dwarfs goes out in a blaze of glory, taking on Balrog. Um, I, I, I don't Thanks, know. That song's going to be in my head now. I don't know about Rings of Power. I, you know, it's, it's just a bit near. Well, okay, let's move on then. Yeah. Do you want me to go for the next one? 
Yeah, go on. You had a, you, that, your wings of power was very short. Deadpool and... Not the first time he's heard that. Wolverine. It's finally what? available to buy. What did you think? I gave <laughs> my thing the other week. What did I, you think? I really liked it. Yeah, it's, it's hard not to. I, I think, A, it's the best of the Deadpool films, in my opinion. It is good, yeah. Um, and B, it's probably one of the best Marvel films. Mm. Um, which I don't th- think anyone was really expecting. I, I think I think people thought it's going to do well at the box office because of the hype. I don't know whether they knew that going into it, um, because because again, it's one of those. But would you not say it was? I would say yeah, best Marvel. Would you not say it was the best Fox film? <laughs> yeah, maybe. Yeah, maybe. I, I, I just, you know what you're gonna get. It's it's gonna be completely different to the Marvel universe, and that's what it plays on and draws on. It still had a good storyline. Um, yeah, I just think they did a really sterling job. Well, they, t- um, they tied it nicely in with the time. Well, yeah, what it's called now, the Time Bureau thing from Loki and all that. Yeah, but I, I just felt a little bit cheap shotted by the way it just sort of stayed its own thing at the end well yeah that, but that was that was my that was my only yeah. complaint i liked it because i thought it was going to be like oh well where are we now this is a different it was all <laughs> like kind of it all just reset and like i said that's why it could be the last deadpool film ever as I, we know I was it. i was looking out for for like some decent end of credits you know yeah thing which wasn't really there which is shame. Well, you got like the the Fox tribute video, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, which 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 is all right, but again, I I was hoping it would be microphone. I, I was hoping it was going to be like what what we're used to at the you end know the arm credits. moves. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, um, really yeah, enjoyed it, um, <laughs> and I might might watch it again very soon. Nah, cool. I like it. So you brought it? Oh no, there yeah. was you purchased it. There yeah, was yeah. a bit after the credits. Right, well, because it was two pound more to buy it than it was to rent it. There, okay. wa- there was a bit after the credits. Was it? Yeah, it's the um, the Johnny Storm speech. I can't remember. But you know the bit with Johnny Storm when he gets killed and Devil's going. He said that it's actually him oh, in yeah, the yeah, thing, yeah. and you see yeah. the whole speech where he did actually. Say I know, it. but I was hoping there was you know. Oh yeah, but, like an Easter egg. Yeah. Kind of, yeah. No. <coughs> yeah. No, but, that was. Cool. But just. Hearing Chris Evans deliver that after years of being <laughs> apple pie, Captain America, and like, yeah, and that fucking bitch, she a fucking <laughs> yeah, and it was nice seeing Electric back. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anyway, well, but I've got I've got two two more things. Okay, Mr. Summers. Summers. Oh, look at that! I've got. I'll tell you what. So the only other, I've just remembered, and it's not, but it's not really cult faction at all. Really, is Grace on ITV one, what, what's Grace? which is based on Peter James. Detective novels stars your man from Life in Mars, Life on Mars, I should say. I forgot the guy's name now. Oh, Not God. Gene Hunt, the other one. <laughs> oh, oh, John, John, Sims. John Sims. Sims. Sim or Sims, whatever the, way. The master. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, it's good. This on its third season now. Um, I've used to read the books religiously when they came out. Hence, probably why I like the TV series. I don't. It's nothing new or special or exciting. You know, it's like in the autumn they have Vera. Sorry, in the autumn they have Grace, and then in the winter they have Vera. Yeah. It just rotates. It's nothing new. Plain old detective series. But, that's, but it's good. But that's what they're supposed yeah. to be, isn't it? I think the only the only thing, if anyone does watch it and has read the books, the th- the one thing that lets the series down is in the books. So it's set in Brighton, and in the books, a bit like they do with Vera, the location is as much of a thing as yeah character in the story as the rest of the main players whereas in grace it, it could be set anywhere. anywhere doesn't really matter but in the books it's very much about about brighton as yeah. in is it, all, is it all bristol back streets <laughs> oh yeah i mean i don't know where Man, no no they do film it in brighton because they're on the pier a lot and stuff but do you know what i mean it, yeah. like if you watch Fear, get the you get all the the shots of the landscape and it's all part of it's no death in paradise no it's no death in paradise yeah. Um, so there's that. So, Brett, yeah, sorry, you can go back now. Okay. We watched, it was new to Netflix, apparently, ooh. Cobweb. Oh. Nope. Ooh, ooh, nope. Right. And basically, um, 
I'll give you the blurby bit. Is that the spider one that I couldn't remember what it was? It's Young, young Peter. Well, it's not really. No, it's, it's just a film or a TV series. Different it's one. a film. Young oh. Peter is plagued by a mysterious constant noise from inside his bedroom wall. I thought you were going to say tapping, inside his head. <laughs> yeah. A tapping that his parents insist <laughs> is in his imagination. Ah. As his fear intensifies, he starts to believe that his parents are hiding a terrible and dangerous secret. <laughs> Anyway, when you meet his parents, his dad's Homelander, so straight away, you don't trust that. <laughs> <laughs> like, he's like, you're going to be fine and Just smiling run. at him. I'm like, no. Yeah. But it's run weird. away. It is weird. I know he's done stuff before, like Banshee, and I watched some of that, but seeing him with dark hair now is weird. So it's, Just, Which yeah. I think is his real hair. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. like his real, yeah. And, um, but it's, yeah. Uh, but no, it was really good. It was very weird, very scary. So is this horror or thriller or... Very much... Was it trying to be horror but not quite psych, make it? Psych horror. No, it, it, it's so. horror. There's enough horror in there. Um, I won't give too much away, but there is... There might be something in the walls. A and cobweb. It, and it might link to other things. <laughs> and um, People under the stairs. And there's a very, <laughs> very dedicated school teacher... Who would never get the time to do anything that she does? <laughs> <laughs> like, who's watching her class? Well, she's doing one pastel. Maybe bit. they're yeah. busy watching One Piece. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <could be>. <laughs> <laughs> she's just locked them in a cupboard yeah. with a with a DVD player. I'll be back in a little bit. It's not the Ghostbusters Afterlife. <laughs> that's that's a lunchtime club anyway. It's not during lessons, One Piece. So, um, so. Yeah, there's many more. Things. Just in case <laughs> Ofsted are listening. Yeah, yeah. any of you Ofsteders are out there. Leave me alone. Yeah, no, so it is a bit creepy. There is a resolution, and um, there are some disturbing bits in it. Does it hold together? There are moments when towards the end. I I enjoyed it, but was I completely satisfied by it? I'm not sure. Is it worth watching? Oh, it was worth a watch. Because I am on the, I want to watch. I haven't watched a decent enough, horror film for but it months. was yeah. like. Well, yeah, does, it, it, it does everything and everything gets tied up at the end, but it was just a bit, I wasn't surprised by anything. Okay. Hmm. Fair which enough. I know although, is, although which I know it's hard to do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it's that, but um, I, I actually, I would say I thought maybe they played it safe with mm-hmm. some of it when they could have pushed it a bit more, which when you watch it, you'll see. But yeah, it is, you know, it's Netflix. It doesn't cost nothing. It's, it's, an, yeah. it's, it's an enjoyable afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> cool, Mr. S- mm. Mr. Hawkins. Uh, two things. Uh, one's going to be quite quick. Slow horses on Apple. Oh, I'm waiting for those to drop. Hall. S- st- yeah, I've started watching those. There's only one left. I thought. Oh, is there? Is yeah. that? God, that's gone quick, isn't it? Yeah. But I'm assuming there is. Uh, that was episode five that we watched up to. Yeah, it's normally only about six, I think. Yeah. It's 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 good. brilliant. It's the same. Y- you know, the, uh, it it just amazes me how they're not all dead um, <laughs> because. Yeah, the main guy, um, Gary Oldman. No, no, no. no. no uh, he's got a funny name, isn't he? <laughs> not if he's listening. No, the character, not him. <laughs> yeah, um, Moon him. or something. Yeah. So he's just not very good. No, he's, he's not a very good agent. <laughs> yeah, he's, he seems to think he is. So, so in his head, he's like some Jason Bourne. You yeah. think, therefore, you are Wonder Agent, but he's just useless. He's not very macho. He's not very, you know, he he can't do martial arts. He's actually not very good with a gun. He's not really good at solving stuff. So you just kind of think... if Well, that's why he's been (laughs) shoved to whatever house. I can't remember what that's called now. So if I was Gary Oldman, I wouldn't (laughs) want to (laughs) work with me either. Now, this this is another one that's on my list. I really want to watch this. Oh, you know, but... Yeah, you should do it. It's good. It's And there's only six episodes a season, so, you know, you could rattle three days in a week. I went back, actually, so I'm, I'm buttoned back in there to try and finish off Monarch, Legacy of Monsters. I'm on about number eight now. I think there's ten. Oh, no, we did. We finished that. And that was all right. I'm still, well, I've watched it, and then I was like, oh, should I watch another one? Try and burn through it. And I was like, no, I'm going to watch something else now. Yeah. This, I enjoy it, but I think there's so much goes on. You nah, just see, need like, we a commit. Break. We watch, right, this is the series we're going to watch. We don't deviate from that until we've done it. Or until we decide to stop for us. I used to, but I think I'm just trying to juggle too many no. series now. That's your problem. Um, yeah. Anyway, the last thing was the platform two. Oh, oh this is the ro- the thingy with the. I thingy. want to watch that. The, the thingy with the thingy. 
The first one was amazing. You explained it better than I can. The, the, first, the first one is an amazing film. I love the first one. And I think that's the problem. Like, like with any sequel. I don't think it needed a sequel. Yeah. Sometimes those films, the, the, the concept and the, the idea is so good. Yeah. Just stop there. Quit while you're ahead. And Not I, that I've seen the second one, but... But I think that is the problem. The idea is really good. Uh, and in the second one, they're just almost continuing it. Like, they've got an idea where they can make sure that everyone's fed and, you know, they play on that. And, yeah, there's some good death sequences and all this kind of stuff. But, I, I, as I said, I, I, I think it just... Deja vu? Should have stopped the first one. Because yeah. it was so good. Um, but, you know, it kills an hour and a half. Oh, God. Not me done. Were you hungry when you watched it? Oh. No. No, <laughs> and, and actually, you know, we're... Where there's lots and lots of floors and all the foods on the one platform going up and uh, going down, yeah, it, it goes through a lot to get to the board. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, I've got one more. Okay. Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. Oh, this is your cinema trip, presumably. Yes. Um, we went to see the new Beetlejuice movie. Um. How much do you want me to... I don't want any plot details. I just want to know what you thought of it. I'm, I must admit, I'm looking forward to... But I don't want any more this. than you see in the trailer. Yeah. Well, the the main plot device, I guess, is that... Beetlejuice? No, no. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> is he in it? <laughs> he, he pops up. The main plot push-along point is that... Um, the dad's dead, old Jeffrey Jones. Yeah, obviously, yeah. obviously we, he wasn't going to come. We couldn't back. have him in, there. but that is also one of my beefs okay. with the film because without uh, it's quite hard without giving him away, he kind of becomes the centre point of the film by not by his being absence. in it. Yep. And I did read somewhere that Tim Burton got Cobby because he wanted to put him in it, and they said no way. So I don't know if this is some kind of... Well, screw you guys. Yeah, you know, like, because, I mean, obviously you have to use his likeness because there's pictures and things yeah. like that. And they do that. So he gets, and he gets some buttons anyway. Yeah, and it's kind of... But I would say it's, it's better than the first one. Okay. Because, but I think also that's because... Jenna of, Ortega's in it. <laughs> And, and Winona oh, Ryder, Damien. I know, I know. I'm no, aware of that I, fact. But I think the first one is very much Appetite for Destruction now. It was a great <laughs> film. I liked it. Do I need to put it on and listen to it again? No, I've listened. I've seen it so yeah, many yeah, times. Yeah. I've listened to it now. And to have something different with, with those characters yeah, yeah. and it move on. You know, when Use Your Illusions came out, you know, it's that, oh, there's always the oh, yeah, look, they got all this. Just, so just in don't. hindsight, I might look back and go, actually, it wasn't as good as I thought. But at the time, it was. there's a lot in it. They open up. They open up the afterlife a lot more. Okay. We okay. only ever saw the waiting room. I'm trying yeah. not to get to it. And you also see a bit more of the the local town. Just just one thing. Does Jenna Ortega literally play a Wednesday ripoff, or is she a bit different in this one? Nah, she's not Wednesday at all. Okay, I mean, cool. she's more just. Well, actually, I think it's. What do we see in the trailer of, of Winona Ryder? Um, I forget now because it's been about a month or so since I saw the trailer. But um, she's someone's getting married. Is she getting married? Was a wedding coming up or something? Oh yeah, she she's uh, Justin Faru is uh, who plays like the slimy cheesy boyfriend kind of thing, which is. Actually, normally... Does he talk into a microphone? <laughs> he does. He talks into lots of microphones. But he's like a sort of producer dude as well. But he's... He normally plays like a cool guy. He was like the director of the movie in um, Mulholland Drive. Remember with the dark shades? And he was the DJ in Zoolander with the dreads. And Who is he in this? He's the cheesy boy. I know. I so let's <laughs> talk <laughs> about this. <laughs> no, well, I'm just saying to our listeners, you might go, who's he? Well, they can and, Google him. And he had a thing with Jennifer Aniston and then dumped her and everyone was sorry for it because it was poor Jennifer. He was the one that dumped her. Remember when it was all like, she's been dumped and everyone no. was sorry. No, I don't. It was him that dumped her. Was this pre-Brad or after Brad? After Brad. Because oh, she'd okay. been for enough. 
<laughs> Shit <laughs> happens. Yeah. But um, so he for him to play that the slimy sleazy thing was quite cool because normally he's the cool, hip dude or whatever you know. Um, which I think who else pops up in it? There's, there's some cool cameos. If you think he directed it, you might be able to work out who they might be. Yeah. But um. All right. So out of ten. Yeah. Let's get to the actual film itself. <laughs> what, <laughs> your thoughts on the film? Uh, really cool plot. A few twists and turns. Nothing that. Actually, there was one bit that did get me, which was quite cool. But most <laughs> of the things that unfold, you're going to kind of go, yeah, okay. okay. But um, it was very much a kind of Looney Tunes ride that you would expect from a Beetle, Beetlejuice sort of type film. And I would probably go, yeah, high seven, eight. Cool. That's good. At the moment, as I say, when I watch it a few more times, I might get <laughs> more. Yeah. But it was just that excitement of you got something, you liked it, but you've seen that one. Like, I don't need to watch that film again. You know what I mean? Because I've seen it a hundred times. Like, uh, and it's good to get you in the mood for Halloween as well. Well, yeah, definitely. It's a nice little thing, but on yeah, trade. Really good. Really good. Cool. Cool. So go and watch it. Support your local cinema. <laughs> <laughs> just take your own snack. Not damn right. Hell yeah. <laughs> the Gate is a 1987 supernatural horror film directed by now I may get this wrong but I'm going to give it a go Tybor Takax that sounds good yep okay, and stars good. Stephen Dorff in his film debut the film follows two young boys who accidentally release a horde of demons from their backyard through a large hole in the ground an international co-production between Canada and the United States. The film cost around five million to make and returned double that at the box office. Three years later, following its success on home video, a previously shelved sequel was released. However, with only Lewis Tripp returning to his role as Terry, it failed to trouble the box office. The film leans heavily into the contemporaneous satanic panic that was recently gripped the United States. However, unlike the majority of horror films released at this period, The Gate is toned down in both its use of shock and gore and jump scares, allowing it to receive a 15 certificate upon release. Originally, screenwriter Michael Nankin penned a much darker movie where only the house was o- not only the house was overrun with demons, but the entire town succumbed to the creatures. There were scenes of neighbours being taken out of their homes, dragged into the street and killed. Glenn and Terry were less related performing acts such as ripping the wings off moths etc and the demon lord was more human like made out of blood and entrails and would stalk Al and Glenn around the house plus the dog didn't come back at the <laughs> end bastards <laughs> a third installment remake stroke remake was slated for a 2010 release entitled The Gate 3D and was going to be directed by Axe Winter however no such release ever happened that's bogus it's <laughs> bogus dude <laughs> Um, the main cast, because I mean, I'm not going to go through them all, and to be fair, anyone else I don't mention here doesn't really do a lot. You've got Stephen Dorff as Glenn, Christina Denton as Al, Lewis Tripp as Terry Chandler, Kelly Rowan as Laurie Lee, and Jennifer Irwin as Linda Lee. Yeah, Jennifer Irwin is the uh, one. You... Yeah, Eastbound and Down, and just loads of stuff now. And I can't think of anything <coughs> else. Anything else, but she's been but in lots yeah, of stuff. If you, yeah. if you Google her, you're like, oh, it's her. Cool. All right, so as is customary when we put our spotlight on a movie, especially one of the past, we give our initial memories and thoughts and have a little bit of a nostalgia fest. So I'll start with Mr. Hawkins. Yeah, it's going to be quite short for me. I've seen it, but I couldn't remember anything about it. Okay. I know I've seen it because, you know, when you watch it and you think, I know exactly what's coming up in the next scene. <laughs> But yeah, bef- before going into it, no. Nah. Cool. Blank. Blank, blank. slate, mate. Blankety blank. Uh, Mr. Summers. I remember this was another video classic where the artwork drew me into the video. <laughs> but the poster looks amazing. <laughs> yeah. The poster is, well, it does look like an album cover of that time, which I guess is what they were going for. And, um,. I remember getting it. This was in at the time. I think it was Sparings in Hickory. Oh, Sparings. Sparings. <laughs> 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 and um, and I think it was one of those. If you brought it back by five o'clock, you got <laughs> it for like two pound or something. Yeah. You know, whatever it was, rather than five pound. Brett was there going, I can do like five of those. Sure. <laughs> Damn right. Two TV sets, two VCRs going. <laughs> and 
and as always, my my trusting mother trusts my cinematic judgment. And as long as I, I think I she just quiet, gave up on you by then. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'd already seen all the Friday the Thirteenth and Elm Streets by then. Yeah. So this one was a fifteen, so it was probably like, oh, he's doing kids' films. Yeah. Um, yeah, I remember getting there. I remember enjoying it. I remember, and I've just forgot. It's just gone out of my head now. What the band was called? Sacrifice. But, no, but there was a no, but there was he had the T-shirt on. Oh, um, of was it Raven? No, what no, was the, it's. Uh, Killer Dwarfs. No, Killer Dwarfs is the back patch. Oh, okay. But he has a T-shirt on, and it was like a, it was a northern like fresh metal band from England. Okay. And ah, oh, it's gonna bug me now. Oh, cause when I watched it, I was like, don't oh, worry yeah. about it. No, but that's, that, I'm I know. Sleep. But don't. I'll look it up later. Yeah. But um, it was like a power trio, and I was just like, I was remember being excited that like someone else had heard of them, and they were, <laughs> in, and they were in an American film. But they were, that was in the proper, like, early days Metallica metal, that sort of stuff. Yeah. Which is probably, if you listen to it now, it's just awful. But, yeah. um, <laughs> but um, Speed Metal. We'll leave days. that one there. Yeah, I'll have a look. But, yeah, I remember that. And um, Poison Dwarf were a band from Poison. memory. Yes, yeah, it's Poison Dwarf, Poison you're Dwarf, right. Yeah, Poison Dwarf were a band at the time. I think they were a gimmicky band at the time from memory. But I remember I, I knew I'd heard of them. And looking back now... <laughs> There was a moment when uh, I'll, I'll get to that in a minute, actually. But um, yeah, so that was my memories of that. But that's the bits I remember more than, and I remember there was a hole when there were demons and things. But yeah, that was kind of I didn't remember that much. Of that. I didn't remember all the. I remember the party, but I didn't remember it being like it was or whatever else. But yeah, no, it was lots of memories and music because I think I was quite into the. Satanic panic. With, I think <laughs> D. Snyder had done his speech at the high courts in America yeah. and all that, and we were all playing Judas <coughs> Priest and Sabbath backwards, trying to actually hear yeah. something. Yeah, exactly. Ruining our styluses. So yeah, that's my more music memory tying in with that at the time. Yeah, same here, really. Yeah. Although, so this was around the time that we 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 got Sky TV. So and it was a staple on. I think it was probably on every day on Sky because. They had a limited amount of stuff they could put on. Yep. And I remember we taped it, as you used to do in the old days, <laughs> and would just watch it along with things like Nightmare on Elm Street, etc. You had them on pretty much a constant loop throughout the summer holidays. But like you, it was the music that, that, drew, it made, that stuck in my, hind, in my mind more than the uh, film itself. So I'm not entirely sure why I chose it, but I did. And we watched <laughs> it. So there we go. To go through the plot, it was Venom. But, oh, was it Venom? That was the band. that was his T-shirt. I'm glad we cleared that up. Yeah, so am I. I wouldn't have been able to sleep. No, I'd have been worried about that. Right, Brett, you're first up on oh, our yes, epic plot walkthrough. Well, there was a lot to get through. There's a lot <laughs> happens in this film. Yeah, Ven- no, Venom was the f- the f- when we first <laughs> see him. It was the f- no, I'm just checking while I'm <laughs> I'm trying to cover while I'm scrolling for the bit. To you're not read. doing a great job. Well, that's because you heckled me. Yeah. yeah. You let me just talk. Be quiet in the back there. Maybe if you'd have done as you're told and not worried about Venom and got well, ready. No, Venom was the back patch when we first see him. That was what I meant. And right. then later on, it was Killer Dwarfs. Yeah. That's there all I was Killer Dwarfs. Say. Not Poison Dwarfs, Whilst, as you said earlier. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they were their cousins. Made me doubt myself. Anyway, so we've got Glenn, Stephen Dorf, who, um, yeah, he's young in this. <laughs> he returns home to find his house is abandoned. No one is answering his calls, but there's a half-eaten dinner in the kitchen and an eerie sound of laughter from somewhere nearby. He goes into the backyard. He climbs into the treehouse. He finds a lit lantern and a creepy doll. Then the tree is abruptly struck by lightning and collapses. Dun-dun-dun-dun. I had to rewind it uh, uh, when I was watching it because it's like, there's a bottle of HP sauce on that table. Yeah. You don't see HP sauce in, in films. Well, Particularly when they're like, having a roast. I yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, it's like a joint of beef that had been roasted there. Well, that's yeah. what I was thinking. Of, especially with well, it's Canada, red. isn't it? So uh, it's, filled, it's yeah. shot in Toronto. So presumably, yes, it was. being colonial, the, ex-colonial, whatever, the Commonwealth at, and all that. Some of the kids at the party were from Degrassi Street. Were they? Yeah. But they have like gravy on chips and stuff. They have putine, isn't it? Putine. Yeah. 
Yeah, but I, it was just like, I don't know why, but my yeah. eye got drawn to this know, HP source and you just I mean. don't see it. I was thinking, where's the gravy? Yeah, I mean, you wouldn't put HP, but maybe they just leave their condiments out on the table. Some people do that. Dirty bastards. So, you know, the HP source is always there. <sighs> put it back in the fridge. But best bit of product placement. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 30 years <laughs> later and we're talking about HP source. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so this... Have you seen a film with an HP source bottle Yes, win? do please let, let us know. We'll Put it in the comments or send us something. We're on HP source watch. Hashtag it's much better than... saucy movie. Inside number nine's <laughs> look for the rabbit. Look for the HP <clears throat> source. Anyway, so, yeah. I actually thought I'd fast forwarded it or something at this point, And I wasn't sure what was going on. Yeah. And then, then I was like, oh. Yeah, yeah. It's exactly the same. It's got that kind of it, 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 almost like it's opening midway through something, yep. which is the point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Carrying on, uh, Glenn awakens to the sound of music. Uh, oh no, men at work. It was only a nightmare. Through his window, he sees that the workers have cut down the tree in his backyard, and a fragment of geode has been unearthed. Glenn returns with his friend Terry to dig for more. Though the workers have attempted to fill in the hole left by the tree, Glenn and Terry breach the surface and uncover a large geode. In the process, Glenn catches a splinter and leaves a small bit of blood behind. Mm. Maybe relevant later. So it's pretty standard stuff. Yeah, this is a good setup. Yep. I'm on, I'm on board. Yeah. Uh, had a geode. Yeah. I'd be like, whoa, <laughs> cool. But then they smashed it. It's like, mm. This, this is where it. I laughed because I'm pretty sure there's a picture somewhere of you in the coat, Stephen Dorff's got on, and me in the denim sleeveless jacket <laughs> <laughs> without the glasses. <laughs> God, I'm sure I had better hair because <laughs> his haircut makes his head look massive compared he, to the he, rest of his body. He tried catching up with the hairstyle later on in life. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. And um. <clears throat> Somewhere along the line, a personal trainer came in because he's, he's fighting here, but he's doing well. <laughs> <laughs> Jolly little Stephen. But cool. we don't judge on that. No. No, we don't. With Glenn's parents leaving town for three days, Glenn and his sister, Alexandra, or more commonly known as Al, convinces them that they will you be safe. You can call her Al. <laughs> See, I kept thinking of Quantum Leap every time <laughs> I wrote Al on this, but anyway... Uh, she convinces the parents that they will be safe and there's oh, no need for a babysitter. that would have been a good crossover, wouldn't it? Sam goes back into... Uh, That's Stephen where the evil leaper came Stephen from. Stephen Dorff's body. He <laughs> 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 goes, what the f*** is going on here? That's where he got all his fighting prowess from. There you go, that's it. <laughs> He's got a, a repressed memory of being taken over by Sam. Yeah. Anyway, um, so they don't need a babysitter and Al is left in charge. Al obviously throws a party. Of oh, course. Yeah. What, what else? Waste no do? time. Yeah. Upstairs, Terry and Glenn break open the geode. They discover it has a left a strange writing on a notepad, and they read the incantation out loud. I should have put a comma or something there. They go downstairs just as the party goes. The party goes and began playing a levitation game. Unable to lift the selected teenager, they accost Glenn and try it on him. Everyone is shocked when they successfully levitate, levitate him, and then he gets thrown across the room. Yeah. I have to say, Terry is not making a great effort to try and break that geode. <laughs> He's not even holding it down. You know, you need to get a vice or prop it yeah. sternly on the table so it doesn't yeah. move. All he's doing is got a... And why why is he hitting it with a with a chisel? Just hold it and just, bang just it with what, a hammer. Just well, what no, tools no, no, they no, got, no, isn't no, it? No, no, you want a chisel because you don't want to smash it. That's the whole point. You, the chisel tries to break it in a straight line. Oh, okay, fair enough. But even so, he needs it needs a vice or something to yeah. hold it. Yeah, this was the point where I spotted kids from Degrassi Street around at the yeah. party. And also, this has got to be the shittest party in a horror film yeah, ever. exactly. Nothing happens. There's in no the red morning, cups. They don't, have no... to, they don't clear up afterwards. There's no, like, we better rush to clear out. That front room is Oh, no, she's... Cl- have you not noticed? No, she's... she's, she's oh, hours clearing, clearing up as, as they're going, going along, isn't she? <laughs> but, I mean, but there's normally the next morning bit where, like, we've yeah. got to clear it up and there's someone on the floor going, oh, where are we? Yeah. And it was all spotless. Someone so phones the yellow pages and says, yeah. is yeah. this possible you might just be able to save my life? Who are you? Who are you? <laughs> Who's she? <laughs> None of that. Anyway. Yeah, yeah it's, a la- it's a pretty lame party. Oh, it was, Let's be yeah. honest. 
It's not. I good. was just laughing at that, <laughs> and the music. They're all like clearly jocks or like preppy kids, and they're all listening to new romantic yeah. kind of, which is probably probably just put over the top afterwards. But more than likely, yeah. But you know, they wouldn't be listening to that. No. And the tracksuit tops and that were just and the hair, oh, it was yeah, it was eighties, wasn't it? it Even was. so, though, I think. I, I don't think a lot of effort was put into the... It was 80s in Canada, so you got to remember... Canada, <laughs> About 10 years behind. Canada didn't get the 80s till 1986. Yeah. <laughs> and it was too well lit as well. Yeah, they're supposed to be selling sort of... Well, the, the guy is telling a ghost story of some sort. I wasn't even... To be honest, it was so lame I wasn't listening. Yeah, but, it was. Yeah. Oh, he's obviously supposed to be doing some sort of... No one even did the yawny arm stretching to try and exactly. touch a girl. No. And none of them, none of the girls were in like decent cheerleader outfits. It, it completely missed yeah. the, on the horror story genre. Yeah, yeah they didn't. There's no horror of, tropes in this bit at all. There wasn't a slutty one. No, nope. there wasn't a brain box. No, no. one went so, upstairs. You know. They're all they're all just and then later pleasant on, well, that was kids that laughing. like each other and, and drinking soda. It's yeah. the next bit, but it was like when she's then embedded like a full pajama bodysuit. Like <laughs> <laughs> ah, yeah. So this is it's, it's not on here because I couldn't I couldn't quite fit it in, but. I think child services may need to be called on either the director or someone because the scene where she's in her pajamas and she looks at the mirror and checks herself out, no relevance whatsoever. And it just felt a little bit pervy. And that's not me looking back with current eyes. I don't think it could be pervy in I that big jumpsuit she was wearing. Yeah, but but that's um, the point because she does that and then she does that and it's just I don't know it's just felt, what was the point in that girls. Uh, yeah, is that but the idea of it I'm guessing I don't know I guess so but I don't know it just felt a little bit what was the point in that anyway you're up Brett okay so that night after the most raucous party in the history <laughs> of Canada Glenn sees his bedroom wall stretching and Terry embraces a heavenly apparition of his dead mother, only to have it turn out to be the body of Angus the dog, Glenn's recently deceased dog. Well, we learn at that point that it's deceased. Yeah. yeah. Think, yeah. Sorry, yeah, uh, I didn't... Yeah, uh, yeah I, I did... Um, I ag- agonised over how to write this bit without it, because he walks past the dog at first, who's dead. Anyway. <laughs> so maybe the dog had all the booze. Yeah. <laughs> Passed out. And the drugs. Yeah. <laughs> The next day, Glenn wants to call his parents and tell them about the dog, but Al is reluctant as she is clearly enjoying her freedom. Meanwhile, Terry's at home rocking out to (laughs) Sacrifix, a European heavy metal band whose lyrics are supposedly based on something called The The Dark Dark Book. Book. And looking at the album sleeve, Terry realises that the writing on the notepad is the same that is on the album sleeve. I mean, that's pretty good coincidence that he just so happens to be listening to the band. Yeah, yeah that very band. And I like the way it's, 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 you put rocking out when, in fact, he was dancing with a curtain cloak. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's, he's got like, a multicoloured curtain on his head. But, you we've, know, we've all done it. This is Canadian rocking out, clearly. <laughs> yeah. Sacrifice. I want to know who the band were on the album called. <laughs> yeah. That looked like, like they had fun making that. Sacrifice might be my favourite film band next to Stillwater and Spinal Tap now. <laughs> About Wild Stallions. Yes. Where do they they're, fit into this they're, equation? They're, they're more than a band. They brought harmony to the universe. <laughs> they're more than just a band. They're like political. Leaders. They're a way of life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I like the fact. So, like we say, he's, he's standing on his bed. He's got the thing over his head, and he's he's reciting the lyrics. And it, and then it's something. Like, they, they wait go, a minute. Yeah, it's like <laughs> wait a minute. Zoinks. Yeah, we, we don't see. It's, at no point do we see him take that note because the, the, all this happened at Glenn's house. Yeah. Yeah. Suddenly, he's in possession of the really, notepad. You, you've missed a little bit as well from the beginning, where um. Stay indoors. Dad sits him down to sort of say, uh, "That's te- my HP source." <laughs> no, no, no. It was his his peppy father talk, which was the most <laughs> offensive thing in the whole film. Where he's like, "Terry's mum's dead, and he's a bit messed up, so don't play with him." <laughs> Basically, and it was just like, "Dude," <laughs> I was like, 
And he's angry at everything. And sometimes he just wants to do crazy things. It doesn't mean you have to do them. Oh yeah, well. would you jump and off a cliff? cliff if, yeah. And I was like, that's, that, I don't know. I just that just felt really wrong. And like, it's like they couldn't be bothered to set up the fact <coughs> that Terry was messed up. So they got his dad to tell to, to tell us. <laughs> Because, like, you know, all you get is Terry goes home to an empty house and there's a note on the fridge that says, yeah. gone out, gone on yeah. business. Yeah. And he has, he has, he takes a bite out of a cold pizza. Dad's clearly not coping well with the mum's death. The house is in a state. But it was just like, I don't know. It was just how he did it. He's like, hey, son, you know, Terry's a fuck up because his mum's dead and like this, that, and the other. And it was just like, no, you can't. No, it was just wrong how he did where's, it. Where's the compassion? Yeah. <laughs> well, at least, like, you know, your friend Terry might be a bit angry at the moment because of what's happened, you know. Yeah. And um, you know, keep an eye on him. Yeah, like, go easy on him. Up. Be a not, good support, his like, friend. Don't play with him. If he wants to do anything he's... silly, try and stop him. Not yeah. Terry's a Let him psycho. crack on. Just don't you do it yourself. Maybe yeah. that's where there was no alcohol or drugs at the party. <laughs> that's it, yeah. yeah. Anyway, yeah. Al heads off to the beach, leaving Glenn alone. Her friend Eric is tasked with disposing of Angus's body. And she do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Don't take it to the vet or anything. Um, however, when he arrives at the animal shelter... Oh, that's right. He did, yeah. He did try. Um, it is closed. So he heads back to Al's house where he notices the giant hole and promptly dumps the dog body in there. It's almost like it was meant to be. Mm. Terry brings the album to Glenn's house, believing that the hole in Glenn's backyard is a gateway to the domain of evil gods, and speculates that their actions from the previous day started the process. He goes on to say that the only missing element would be to deposit a sacrifice into the hole. Uh oh! Dun 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 dun! <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, yeah. You get rid of this dead dog. <laughs> it's like, yeah. what the fuck? Oh, wait, what? That was. Like, for lack of a better term, I believe it was lazy. It was no, but it was it was. I believe the technical term is pussy whipped. Because <laughs> he <laughs> was like, he was like, yeah, okay, I'll get rid of it. Because he's yeah. been trying to get on with it, and she's not into me, guys. <laughs> he's like, I'll get rid of your dead dog, and take it to the vets, and then carry it and dump it into a hole. <laughs> You know, he's not. Even, he's a nice guy. He's not even the asshole. Boyfriend. No, he's not the, he's the typical jock. And that's probably his problem. Yeah, that's probably yeah. why he's not getting anywhere. That's it. Is this just like all the losers? It's like the one. It's bit the losers, all the losers club. party. <laughs> yeah. All the other ones are like fighting proper demons somewhere else. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, drinking whiskey and then like making a little flamethrower with a with a uh, lighter to get rid of the demons. Yeah. <laughs> Any proper kids do. Yeah. Okay, so after reading the section of the, the dark book that is supposed to close the gate, the boys find the hole is closed and assume their efforts were successful. Our arrives back at the house and presents Glenn with a toy rocket because she's no longer going to the beach. She spent all her money on this toy rocket and randomly for no reason. Because she loves him. It's an yeah, act but of love. I know. I know the. I know <laughs> where it's supposed to be leading, but there's get there's no no. Meat around these uh, bones. I understand. Yeah. At this point, Sigmund Freud is doing backflips. <laughs> exactly. That night, a swarm of moths shatter Glenn's bedroom window, and Angus's corpse is found in Terry's bed. A pair of demonic arms try to go on. You want to say something? <laughs> Gotta watch that Terry. <laughs> like, stuff's happened to him, and he's messed up. Why wow. is he? <laughs> he's in bed with your dead dog. <laughs> A pair of demonic arms tried to pull Al under the bed, and Terry and Glenn barely save her. They attempt to flee the house, but are greeted outside by Glenn and Al's parents, who are actually disguised demons. After returning to the house, Al volunteers to inspect the yard, but the others see it swarming with small little demons and call her back. Terry leads everyone to the basement to retrieve the dark book, but it bursts into flames. They then attempt to stop the creatures by reading the Bible. When in doubt. <laughs> Reach for the Bible. Yeah. I thought the little creatures looked amazing for 986. Yeah. I, I know it's probably been touched up since then, sort of thing. Yeah, just, quite just, possibly. Just like Terry and the dog. But, <laughs> um, you know, cause of, but it was, you know, 986, it was, I'm guessing people in suits over a giant background rather than stop motion. And I don't know. I was trying to work it out. But Yeah, it's mostly it's it done looked, five. So, obviously, that, when they're running around the yard... That is 
superimposed on top. But yeah. a lot of the a lot of it is done with the using forced perspec- yeah, forced forced perspective. Forced uh, perspective. But I thought it looked really good. I mean, there's there's worse stuff out nowadays using that. Yeah, hundred percent. There's it, nothing wrong with it. The only the only the, my only <laughs> um, gripe with the demons is they don't look particularly scary. They just and look that's, stupid. That's what I was going to say. They look a bit joke. Then they look a bit like well, you could. They're we're like wandering it. around. We don't. We don't know why we're here. We're gonna, <laughs> we, you know. There, there, there could have been Benny Hill music playing over the top yeah. at that point. Uh, and I think that. Well, was again, I think they had no direction. Like you put that suit on, and you, all of you put the suit on. Now when run. I shout action, run, <laughs> and they just all run in different directions. Run over so. there. Run back yeah. again. Now run that way. But it was. I'm sure I've seen those demons in something else. Probably. I almost thought it was a bit um, Ghostbustersy. Yeah, the they do look a thing. little bit like the. Um, the dogs, the um, yeah, shit, I can't remember what they're the called now. Gatekeeper and the key master, yeah, terror dogs. That's the f- yeah, that's no, not no. what I was thinking of. If that's what they're called, I'll take your word for it. That's what they called them back in '84 for some of the advertising, I think. Okay, fair enough, but um, yeah, no, but um, I was quite impressed with all that. I mean, it, it, it don't get me wrong, it is still a bit cheesy for what it is, but compared to. Like a lot of those things at the time, and even now, there was something the other day where they had little monsters in that we watched, and then they looked a bit rubbish. And that was like after this. Yeah. Was there something in House or House Two with tiny little monsters? Oh, it doesn't matter. Jesus, it's probably in loads of different. Yeah, things. bound to be. Go on then, Brett. So anyway, with their trusty Bible, Terry suddenly um, decides. Oh, wait there, don't the, don't the gals try it first? Or was that later on? Gals don't try it, no. No, because don't they say, like, oh, we'll do it because we went to Sunday school? Yeah, that's not... Is that later on? Yeah, I think so. Oh, sorry. Um, that made me laugh as well. We'll do it. We went to Sunday school. I was <laughs> like, oh, God. But anyway, sorry. Um, <laughs> Terry <laughs> reads from Psalm 59, and the hole seems to be closing... But he slips and falls into it, where he is attacked by the itty bitty demons. Al and Glenn pull Terry, Terry out the hole as it begins closing. Terry reads from Genesis, but like anyone, <laughs> decides that's probably not what to do, or he panics, so he just lobs the Bible into the hole and or hopes for the best. Or he just thinks, I'm going to spread the word and let them yeah. read it. Yeah. An explosion knocks them unconscious. When they wake up, the hole appears sealed once more. That night, a wall breaks open and a dead body falls through. Glenn wonders if this is the construction worker he heard was buried in the walls of the house, although Terry confessed that he made the story up. Before either the boys can react, the construction worker pulls Terry into the wall, which seals behind him. Hmm. How many times do you think the props people were fed up? Open the hole, dig the hole back up, <laughs> put it back up again. Yeah. <laughs> Well, the power of direction probably means they could have shot it out of... Yeah, yeah. oh yeah, I get that. But we, say, we say this at least once every couple of months. Yeah. Films aren't filmed in sequence. Not all of them. The majority True. of the month. Anyway, upstairs, upstairs, Al notices a hazy image of the construction worker in the mirror. Glenn bursts into Al's bedroom and the construction worker appears. Al throws a stereo at him. And he disintegrates into a dozen little, little demons. Al holds the bedroom door shut while Glenn races down to find the father's gun. Good lad. A demonic version of Terry appears and bites his hand. Al runs downstairs to help and stabs Terry in the eye with the foot of a Barbie doll. Probably the most violent <laughs> bit in the whole yeah. film. Yeah. Al and Glenn hide in the closet, but the construction worker breaks through the interior wall. Al fires a shot into his head, but is uninjured and drags her away. Do we ever get an explanation of who that dude is? No. Like he said, I made that up. It wasn't really true. He was winding him up. So who was yeah. this strange demon-y ghost Well, the, the, man? the demons have taken, or initially took Terry. They got So they, I don't know, read his mind or something and... Yeah, the powers of the story of yeah, suggestion. Yeah, exactly. And power of suggestion and all that. they did their parents and that, I suppose. Yeah. Or, or maybe they forgot and didn't read the script <laughs> and yeah. thought, well, we've got all the prosthetics well, now. I've got an actor over there. 
Well, Terry still hasn't said, oh, by the way, the other night, you never guess what happened. My dead mum turned up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't yeah, yeah. mention. That's never mentioned. No, well, he copes. I mean, this guy, he's, I mean, he's, he's... Sorry about your dog. Yeah. You know, but like, he doesn't even say, sorry, it was actually my dead mum, and then it turned into your dog. Yeah. Or anything like that. No one, in fact, no one goes, what the fuck are you doing, a dead dog by the front door? Yeah, and he's no just one like, says that. He's like just, dancing he's dancing with it. With it. Exactly. Oh, it's dear. like, yeah, ter- Terry's... I want to see the second one now, because I imagine <laughs> by the second one, Terry's just like a complete psycho where he's been through so much. It's just like... <laughs> it's a gibbering wreck. Right, yeah. Sorry, I've interrupted. That's all right. Uh, yeah, I was going to say, the prosthetics, though, on the construction work is pretty cool. And it's yep. quite a good... You know, obviously, that's all practical. That's all good. I I, I thought that was good. Right, Glenn realises that Terry and Al represent the two two human sacrifices that would fully open the gate. He realises that the rocket Al intended to give him for his birthday is a symbol of love, light and purity. Of course it is. It's the only thing that can stop the rise of the old gods. He makes his way upstairs just before the floor collapses, revealing a chasm beneath the house. Glenn retrieves the rocket and attempts to launch it, but the matches keep blowing out. The wind sucks Glenn into the foyer, where a giant serpentine demon emerges. The demon pats Glenn on the head, touches his hand, and returns to the hole. Just like, there, there. <laughs> yeah. It's like, oh, actually, he's not evil after all. He just wants to be friends. Yeah. Glenn has disco- been lonely down in the hole. Yeah, exactly. He's been there for a millennia. Glenn discovers that the demon's touch has placed an eye in the palm of his hand. For no reason... Yeah. Yeah. Glenn stabs out the eye, then struggles to descend the, to descend the staircase. Well, that's not easy to say, is it? Struggles to descend the staircase, at which point the demon re-emerges. Glenn uses a battery-powered launcher to fire his rocket into the demon. The demon explodes, dispelling the dark clouds above the house. Glenn returns to the house. Angus emerges from the front closet, seemingly restored to life. He is followed by Terry and Al, also unhurt. The kids worry about how to explain the wreckage of the house to their parents. So they killed the demon with the giant rocket of love his sister gave him. (laughs) Hmm. Yeah. And the dog's dead. But it's back. But it's back. Yeah. It's power of love. But the... (laughs) It's a curious thing. But the... But... The house is a mess. That's the... Oh, how are we going to explain it to mum and dad? And that's where they get yellow pages then. Yeah. (laughs) This is it. I'm sure they had yellow... No. What? The equivalent. They, yeah. They'd have had the equivalent. The Canadian pages. <laughs> well, they did, because it was in all American films and Highlander. Yeah, I can't it. remember what they call it. They, 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 oh, doesn't matter. Phone book. No, they don't call it the phone book. Anyway, oh, I'm trying blue to pages back or something. To, to list, back to the future. Isn't it something list? Yeah. Yeah. Phone... Oh, it doesn't matter. Jesus. Right in the I'm comments below. Tell us what you call the yellow pages in the States. Not that we have the yellow pages anymore either, for clarification. No. We've moved on. We have the internet now. No, we don't have phone numbers. <laughs> what do you mean we don't have phone numbers? You can't look up Brett Summers and anywhere and say... The yellow no pages home. wasn't a phone book. No, but we had a phone book. We don't we, have we, them We're now. not talking about yeah, phone books, are we? Book. It's an online the phone yellow book pages well. was... Yeah, but you're not registered. Your telephone number isn't registered. Not like the old days as well. The landline yeah. would be. The landline is. Where? In the phone book. Which is online. There's a phone book. Yes. I thought they got. I thought they had to scrap it because of data protection. And no, all that. you can decide no. whether or not you're in it. Or not, yeah. Obviously, but I didn't know that. But you could anyway. Even like 20 even years before ago, yeah. GDPR, you yeah. could still. That's good because I'm always forgetting my home phone number. Craigslist. I'm, I'm not even even connected. Craigslist. No, no, that's a selling no. and buying thing in a okay. in a serial killer's Sorry, just marketplace. Pop, just, uh, pop, just pops pro- into my head. <laughs> where people go to like swap wives and stuff yeah. or whatever it is. Who's Craig? Yeah. Anyway. Anyway. Not important. It might be. <laughs> <laughs> well, say, someone in the comments can tell us <laughs> what the hell we're talking about. Who is Craig and why is his list important in your country? Well, that's thrown me completely. What did we just watch? The Gate. The Gate, that was it, yeah. So there we go. That was the gate. Yeah, yeah, it was. Um, I think the ending was a bit rushed, and uh, as I shouted out midway through my narrative, there, what was the fucking point in the eye? Yeah. It 
It's like, oh, I've got a really cool thing I can do. I actually <laughs> forgot because I did it and then it was dealt with in about 10 seconds. Yeah, later. he's got the eye. He looks at it, it blinks at him and then he goes and gets something, a knife or something and stabs it. Wasn't that in one of the Nightmare on Elm Streets? I think it's been in loads of things. Yeah. But I think it's like yeah, Nightmare on Elm Street is in the back of his throat. The, oh, Elm, yeah, Elm Street right, yeah. 2. The whole thing about this film is there seemed to be a collection of good ideas and nice bits but as a whole, it feels like a jumbled mess. Yep. Um, I wonder if it's another one that got cut to pieces and then like half of it, or it was just made that way. <laughs> you know that one where they're like, it must be an hour and a half. And in those days, they just cut bits out whether yeah. it meant anything or not. Potentially. You know? uh, and it f- uh, and you know, to, to the opening bit that you mentioned before we walked through the plot, you know, I feel that it really struggled from what are we? Are we going to be something like Gremlins? Or is that a bit too full on? Do we want to be a bit more um I think they were PG? going more for like the kids' exactly. teen horror but rather than slasher. Yeah. But I think that's the problem. If it had been... If they'd have plucked up the courage to say, no, we're going to make a proper We're going to make what, the, sc- what yeah. the screenwriter yeah. originally penned. Yeah. I mean, if you think around that time, you would have had <coughs> gremlins, trolls. gremlins, trolls, ghoulies, um, critters. You know, you've had yep. all the little people movies that are out. But they, and they've obviously tried to have their own <coughs> little people. But they also played on a bit of humour. This didn't have humour. It mm, was just... I'd, I'd say it did in some ways. I don't think it did. I think it was so bad... It wasn't funny. It was just like I oh, know you. You got the bit with the the two bully girls where they like what you. Oh, what was it they said when they sort of they they used a homophobic slur at them? There's quite a few of those in it. Yeah. To be fair, I mean, Glenn calls <laughs> one of the, well, the older kid a fag and runs yeah. off. And then no, it was like you two <laughs> gaying it up over there yeah. or something, fagging it up. Yeah, yeah, but that's just a and comment. I, I meant that there was no it's more than a comment, Paul. No, no. But what no. I mean is, if it oh, was no. like a Gremlins or a Trolls, then the little demons would have done something comical. Munchies as well. Do you remember that one? <laughs> yeah, I remember that. But yeah, you're right. There's there's humour in those. There's sort uh, of prank prankster type and you know elements to them. And in some of those films, they try to instill moments of poignancy or proper emotion. None of this made any sense. I, uh, I, I, no, I, so I so I would disagree. A little bit on there, in so far as the film has a number of faults, not least the direction of the edit in which, we'd, which you've just yeah. kind of touched on. I mean, rather than follow, rather it's it's a lot of set pieces yeah. that follow on from each other rather than blend naturally. So yeah, it's but like it's a jump cut from it really it's night, is. then it's jump cut to the morning, then it's jump cut to the later in the afternoon. It's almost as if the directors kind of like well I just want to get this film over and done with yeah, so they, would have, they would have only had limited filming hours with the kid actors as well, yeah potentially so. but I mean my, well, my they thinking they the poltergeist girl 20 <laughs> right, hours a day yeah, yeah. That, how did that end up yeah but I'm just saying yeah but I think the, the director basically just wanted to get this movie over and done with and get signing his Hallmark contract because that's what he does now is make Hallmark <laughs> movies oh, God. so that's that's like that's his bank for the rest of the rest of his career. Is he reunited with Stephen Dorff? <laughs> <laughs> but, Quite um, possibly. But I bet he's but in some what I was going to say is, so all of the, the jump cuts and there's there's no real cohesion to, to the the plot itself. And then the subplot with the uh, with Al and the potential boyfriend, I can't remember his name because it was pointless bothering to remember it. Derek or yeah, Derek Eric or something. Know. It's got no relevance to how the main plot ro- f- plays out, and it's the same for the two girls. They they're just, or sorry, the two sisters. I think they're only there to f- provide one piece of relatively lame comic relief. Well, in fact, very lame comic relief, which is they go back in the house and they open the cupboard doors. Yeah, and they're there with garlic round their neck but and holding there is, crucifix. Is there is that bit around that bit and the bit where they're sort of <laughs> Scooby ganging walking along before they run back in the house in the cupboard. There's a good, I would say, it's about a good ninety seconds when it's like, um, this is the film Goonies could have been. 
It's got a very but, Goonies. But, but there is, but there's about ninety seconds where like Goonies could have been this good in that ninety seconds. The rest of it, no. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Because they're all walking along, they're fighting demons, they're looking around, they're all. I thought, oh, they've got the act together now. Then they go outside again. We're going to go back indoors because we've done our hours on this film set, yeah. so we'll be back in a minute. And um, there's a few of those as well, and you watch from different angles and things. You're like, I wonder if that... I'll stand over here while you two go over there. And you see someone stood there, we're like, that's not him. Yeah. And whatever else. But yeah, it was... It was yeah, so it was a good 90 seconds where, you know, Goonies was jealous. But that was about it. Yeah, was about 90 the seconds. Hour, about the hour and a half that it was on. <laughs> but all that being said, about the 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 subplot and the, the direction, I think the only thing that kind of does come through and although you you've already disagreed is that I think the the friendship between Glenn and Terry works because it feels oh, you know, feels like feels them. genuine and, and also th- with the sister so you know and I know it's all part of the build up to have the whatever it was the love, love and rocket. sacrifice and the love rocket yeah the love rocket but I Sounds mean it's like the, a red hot chili pepper yeah. song <laughs> that 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 relationship actually kind of feels real insofar as that's probably how I mean, I haven't, I've only got a brother, but that that's probably how yeah, an older, a, you yeah, know, bit of an age gap between yeah. them as well, I guess. Which is to be fair <clears throat> in most films of this kind of genre that were aiming at that sort of market would have had even the sister and the best friend as basic cannon fodder. Only the protagonist is going to be the one that comes out of it unscathed. So only uh, uh, Glenn. Only Glenn is the one that would come out of it unscathed, if you see what I mean. Hmm. Others would have just had them being, yeah, cannon fodder for the demons. Yeah, but no one dies. No, exactly. Even a dog comes back. <laughs> this, is, this is probably the worst demon ever. He's not very good. No, he doesn't even move. He, he, he can't he, even get he out rises of the bloody up. house. Yeah. No. Out the garden, anyway. <laughs> 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 he did destroy a tree house. That takes some doing. No, he didn't. Well, it was like the construction workers did. did that. Yeah, yeah, but that might they were acting on behalf of the demon to open the. That's the a point gate. again. The reason for the tree house or the tree itself being demolished has is not mentioned but, whatsoever. But it's that, like oh, the the guys come in, destroy, it, take it down. That, that first the bit, they're having dinner. Looking back now, that first bit was there. Homage, I think, to the ending of Invaders from Mars and the ending of Carrie, where they kind of do that weird kind of dream sequence. Because remember, the ending of Invaders from Mars is when the rocket hits. He wakes up and thinks it's a dream, and then yeah. we see it land again. And like Carrie, when she goes to the grave and it jumps yeah. up, you know, where it's sort of filmed a bit backwards. I think they were trying to do something like that and to be arty, but to be fair, it didn't actually really fit in anywhere. No, it had nothing then, to it. He then woke up and the, lo- and the tree house was knocked down. Yeah. I bet all the other demons are laughing at this one. Yeah. Like, oh, bloody Johnny couldn't even take over a little kid. <laughs> yeah. I heard Pinhead went and took his box back from the house. <laughs> cause he, he didn't want to get involved with them. He didn't want no love rocket. Yeah. It was yeah, but it was enjoyable though. It was it was fu- it was a fun frolic. Was it a cinematic masterpiece? Not at all. Was it one of Stephen Dorff's best movies? Probably. It's certainly his best first film. <laughs> his best film <laughs> debut. <laughs> I mean, <clears throat> what was that? Batbeat and Blade. Was he in Blade? Yeah, Blade, Blade. Blade Two, wasn't? It? Or was he? Was first he one, he's in one of them. Yeah. yeah. Batbeat was all good. I'm trying to think what else he's done. And the Aerosmith, obviously, after that, he got sucked back in the hole and shot up into the sky where he parachuted into the Aerosmith videos. <laughs> <laughs> and the roller coaster of love instead of a rocket of love. They've only been about four or five years after that. Yeah, yeah, it would have been. Yeah, early 90s. He did a yeah. lot of growing up. He did a lot of sit ups. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I, d- I just think, you know, it's a bit of a shame of a wasted screenplay. Remake. I think I agree. Mm. Remake it again, but make it better. Steve, make it 3D. Stephen Dorff <laughs> and can be Alex Winters to direct. <laughs> Stephen Dorff can be the inconsiderate, horrible dad. <laughs> <laughs> he could be the demon now. <laughs> he probably could. He's been a demon and everything else. Yeah. Yeah, he was just a serial killer in something recently, wasn't he? 
a film of his. I'm sure it was him. Probably. Yeah. Mm. It was good he's still working. Yeah. <laughs> the thing, no, but the things I've seen him and I've liked, but he was he went for a phase of there was a little while where he was in everything. He was going to be the biggest he, thing ever. Yeah, wasn't and then he? then he wasn't. Yeah. And it was Yeah, I saw him interviewed not so long ago and he's like, Well I've made money. I do what I I do projects that interest me, not Yeah, yeah no, he's I, like, I, I, I don't s- want to be a I Tom Cruise that. or a you know, he didn't say that. He said, "I'm like an that. actor." He's like, "No, not even that." I think it's just more. <laughs> like, well, fuck it. I don't have to. So yeah, he's like the suede of the acting world. Mm. They were going to be the biggest thing ever, and then they disappeared. Anyway, and then they came back twenty years mm. later, and didn't really set the world light. Just like Stephen Dorff. Yeah. <laughs> Apologies, he might have done. I don't and know. the annoying little brother of the guitarist <coughs> took over television. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I say little, he's eight foot tall, but in age. Yeah, no, so I've seen worse. I enjoyed it for what it was. Cheesy, yeah. Very cheesy. Mm. Right, Phil, will I bring up the um, score spreadsheet I, I thing? Because I, 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 I like always the dog. Forget. Dog was good. I feel the dog wasn't utilised enough. Ah, see, this was another one of my gripes. So, there's no impact with the dog's death because no they don't interact with him Wait, he's before he's dead. It's a dog, isn't he? Well, yeah, but you know, the family dog, especially for a kid that age, they don't is really a... care about their kids le- or the other kids or his kids' best friends. So they probably don't give yeah. a it's shit like about the dog. The dog dies. And it's like, well, he was 97 well, in dog they, years, they so used to shit like, happens. They used to like the dog, but the dog's mum died, so they weren't allowed to play with it as much <laughs> as they used to because it might have been screwed up and messed up. And Yeah, and they could have made a bit more. Yeah, because I thought, was 97 <laughs> going to mean something? Because he kept saying... it was That came up about three times that he was 97 yeah. in dog years, but... They obviously just reused that bit. Yeah. Again, I reckon they had a bit of script that they filmed different scenes with and then just put them all in. Potentially. You know yeah. what I mean? Because I'm like, well, they've mentioned that three times now. 97, maybe that's like a numeral in a minute. And then <laughs> or maybe we should start watching some Hallmark films and see if 97 <laughs> appears in any of his later directorial... Uh, average age of the watchers, probably. <laughs> <laughs> see you next Wednesday in the amount of watchers. <laughs> No, but like you said, though, it doubled at the box office, didn't it? Mm. Yeah. It done. But then it's that time period, isn't it? It's, um, yeah. you know, of the age of video nasty has been and gone, if you like, but there's an appetite for all of that stuff, especially after the things like the sat- the Ghoulies and well. um, Gremlins, etc. Yeah, I mean, to be fair, even Satanic, satanic Panic had died off by this point in time. Not in Canada, they just got it. <laughs> they just got it, yeah. <laughs> and also, back in those days, it's like, they didn't really have as much info about a film before going to see it. Yeah. So, so no, they probably that, thought, well, that's a cool poster. Yeah. I'm going to go down oh, to Sparrow and rent that. Yeah. <laughs> that's exactly. exactly it. Exactly how it They suck you in with the poster. 100%. Okay, so final thoughts and verdicts. I'll go to okay. uh, Brett first because th- that makes my life easier to fill okay. this spreadsheet in. Again, <laughs> I, I think if, I, if I, one of my tagline for this that they can put on their poster is that 90 seconds of this movie is the film Goonies wanted to be. <laughs> uh, six. Six. Okay. I think it's if it was on, I'd probably just leave it on in the background. You know, it's not... Yeah. It's not trash, trash, but... I mean, it's, it's better than Class of 99. <laughs> yeah. I'll give you that. <laughs> Mr. Hawkins. I'm going to give it a four. Four. Yeah, I, it really didn't do anything for me. No? Uh, I, as I said, there were a couple. Of, there are a few good ideas, and I would have been more interested to read uh, read the original screenplay uh, as opposed to watching this film. I, I, I just think it was a real shame, and I think that's the problem. Is in my head, I could see the film it could have been. Fair enough. And this wasn't it. So, that's a, what did you just say? Four. Four. Okay. So for me. I mean, does it stand up to modern genre standards? No. Is it scary? Not in the slightest. Are the effects a little bit ropey? Yeah, in most parts. And should the dog come back at the end? <laughs> yes. I'm with the dog. I'm I'm all for the dog coming back. But other than that, overall, I'd say 
plot stands up as does the acting of the three main characters, but it's let down by its... There's no one dies. Yeah. You know, demons are invading this... I'm about to say the planet. They're invading this house. No terror. No one dies. There's no real scares. Basically, I think to enjoy this film, you've got to be either under the age of 15, but old oh, enough oh, to watch wow, that. yeah. Or put yourself back in that mindset, you know, of... It's like an... It's like a... A longer Goosebumps episode. Yeah. Yeah. No, I yeah, no, with, I, it, yeah, it, I hear you. You know, slight, obviously there's a slightly bit more I'd say gore in it. Than a it. lot better written, though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. this is the thing. And yeah. I think, you know, the, but the, the actual plot itself is actually quite cool. It's yeah. a good plot, a good idea. It's just, it's let down by... Execution. It, yeah, by the direction I, I the editing. I even and wonder and if they just filmed the ending with the dog and then later on they killed him and then like, ah, oh, well... He's in the end scenes. So, oh, don't worry. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, no, because the original they... script didn't call for the dog to come back. He oh. he stayed dead. That was. No, I just wonder if like, like you can't. Do, you know, this is nineteen eight. This is Canada. Nineteen eighty seven was it? You can't kill a dog. Tiffany, just can't do it. Tiffany ben, wouldn't like that. It's ben, <laughs> Benji Zacks and the Alien Prince era. Mm. Yeah. Exactly. So my um. Uh, my verdict is five out of ten. Gives it a grand total of fifteen. So let's go through. Oh, it's number four. Oh, I meant, so yeah, <laughs> my, mine was a five, but the extra point was for the fresh metal. <laughs> yeah, I've given it a, a, an extra point um, for the fresh metal as well, because I was going to go with four, but. <laughs> I mean the, the the fact that they put a lot of effort into creating an album sleeve, <laughs> and, and you know a little bit bu- had a budget of five million dollars. Jesus, of course, and it, and it doubled it. Yeah, you know, but that's what I mean. Yeah, it wasn't a small budget. Of course, they had the album cover. Yeah, but I they, wonder they, if they had a backstory for the band. The band all died in a plane crash shortly the, after releasing the that album. That was the best written bit. The <laughs> band, the band. I want to see a film about the band. Yeah. yeah. Sacrifix and how they they rose up the. They had a cool album as well. Yeah. <laughs> there was booklet pages and the dark book and everything. Anyway, you carry on filling while I try and find the sort. I'm button trying again. for you. <laughs> <laughs> so think... where does that leave that on the? So grade? that leaves that I can't even find it now. It's gone so far down. The... Da, 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 da. Do, it do, do. Sits. It nestles snugly with. Hear no evil, see no evil, masters of the universe. And then it's the gate, all on 15. So it's just above Beastmaster, which has 14 points, and just below Mystery Men, which randomly has (laughs) 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 15.8. One of us clearly in a funny mood on that day. Oh, that's you, Paul. You put five, but you gave it (laughs) 5.8. Helpfully. But then, you know, that levitates it above Masters of the Universe and, and the gate. And here we go. And there we go. And, you know, rightly so, I would say. Yeah. Rightly so. So there we have it. That was the gate. My choice, which I think was mostly based on nostalgia. I A bit I like you, Paul. I remember apologize. watching it. I just didn't remember much about it. Much about it. <laughs> that's, and, and how that's why we do these podcasts. That's what we do. We, these. Do. we recommend them. As I say, it's the same with Class of 99. No, no it's I remember not the same as Class of 99. No, but I remembered it. it doesn't, just because it's my choice doesn't mean I'm offended if you didn't like it. This I is true. I, I wasn't mean, that keen on it either. That's but fair I enough. I remember it. And that's why we explore these cult films oh to see if they God. hold up or are... He's, he's gearing us up for something, or, isn't he? Or are they just... Like fond memories, what's it called? What they were, you, you Rose tinted mis- glasses. No, the, the misremembered thing where we're in a different timeline. You know, the oh, people, the Mandela effect. The Manda- is it a maybe, Mandela maybe in a different universe, the gate was a, a seminal <laughs> horror classic. And, and Stephen Dorff has now played, he played Forrest Gump and someone with AIDS <laughs> in that other film. And Philadelphia. Was, and was on an island with a football. Yeah. Cool. But uh, who shows it next? So our spotlight will now turn to a new film or a new choice, I should say, not a new film. And just to remind you, Brett, that Damien and I both have the option to veto. But I think that's a rubbish idea. Well, I've never vetoed any of your choices and I didn't want it. 
go anywhere near Time Bandits. <laughs> oh, don't stop going but on about I, bloody Time but Bandits. I, I did it. Just because you don't like the Pythons. I wanted the challenge of okay. sitting through the film because it's your choice. Again, it's not necessarily like, it's not a personal thing. Okay. Right. We'll anyway, if you choose with all that said and done, which film have you chosen for our next spotlight, Mr. Summers? Um, Jesus shows you the way to the <laughs> highway two. <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna get it's not, it's not. No, we are gonna look at a more modern terrifying Although horror. to be fair, Jesus shows you to the highway <laughs> the scored well above what some would consider classics. It yeah. was a, Jesus shows you the way to the highway it was a great film. Anyway, sorry Brett, you were saying No, I am going to it's it's Kind of a horror, kind of a comedy, kind of a bit surreal. But I think we're ready for it. We're going to take a trip back not too far. Okay. Well, I say not too far, 2016. So it's quite a while ago now, but in my head it's only, yeah, it's only, only like, six months. Yes. Yep. And we are going to explore the horror that is the Greasy Strangler. <laughs> oh, fair enough. I'm, 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 I'm up for that because I think I watched it in 2016. I haven't seen it since. I don't think I've seen it. It is available if you're playing at home. <laughs> you're it, in for a treat. It is available on. Amazon Even Prime. my dad thinks it's great. This is a great film. Oh, really? It's on yeah. YouTube, oh, okay. Google, and Amazon Prime. And I'm sure it'll be on other things. Yeah, you I'm can sure find you can around. find it. Is it free or do I have to rent it? I think on Amazon Prime you have to rent it. But I say, look around. It was on Sky Movies for ages. Okay. And it was on one of the other ones for Yeah, a while. but that was quite a while ago. In yeah, 2018. But, but, but <laughs> yeah. But they haven't got many. They don't really get many new ones anymore. No, that's true. But um, it was a new to Sky Movies the other day and it was like Top Gun. I'm like, that was nine, not the original. Oh, right. It was like new to Sky Movies. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Cheers. <laughs> um, yeah, so The Greasy Strangler, the 2016 classic. I did actually write a full review of it on cultfaction.com, if you want to go and see it, directed by Jim Hosking. And, um, yeah, if you're playing along at home, The Greasy Strangler. It's cool. a film that I remember at the end of my review, I wrote something on the lines of, whether you liked it or hated it, it has changed your life. <laughs> yeah, I can see that making sense. <laughs> oh, cool. see, it's comments like that that just <laughs> make me... Oh, just, we might be in for a good episode next uh, uh, next next time round. Cool, there you have it. So, as I said earlier, that was our spotlight next week, or rather next episode is going to be The Greasy Strangler. All that's left to do is to start our shutdown procedure. So, as always, you can follow us on the Twitter, formerly known, no, X, formerly known <laughs> as Twitter. I don't know, why, why do people just call it X now? That's just, you know, it's been years. We're on X, Instagram, Facebook. Tickety talk. Tickety talk. All of the socials. If you want reviews and all the latest news of everything cult related and a bit of Power Rangers thrown in for good measure, you can go to. <laughs> cultfaction.com and if you want to get in touch with us but don't want to leave a comment on any of those socials for the public to see you can email us at cultfactionpodcast at mail.com for that personal touch indeed so in the meantime or like and subscribe and all that as well oh yeah, indeed. yeah we, right. we have got a new subscriber this evening as we're doing this as we do oh, I mean that is just yeah. I nearly shouted out earlier press. on but you were deep reading so I didn't uh, want to get deep excited. reading wow wow <laughs> yeah, we're all taken aback by that. I don't know where to go with deep reading. No, you were deep into the script. You're <laughs> oh, talking I see. about, so I didn't want to interrupt. Fair your enough. Fair is. Okay. So, unless anyone else has anything they wish to add to this conversation, I think there's nothing left to do. But for us all to say our goodbyes, I'll start over there. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. I've been Paul. See you all later. I've been Brett. It's been awesome. Thank you. Like, subscribe, click, email, follow. Right. It's goodbye from me. <laughs> goodbye. Ah, <laughs> uh, Superman. Cheese. Cheese.
Jeez. <laughs> we owe pitch chips as chips. We owe pitch chips. Uh.